All right, guys, in this video, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the FX Pack Pro, which is the replacement to the SD2 SNES game cart. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, so welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider going down below the video and subscribing to the channel as we are working our way towards 30,000 subscribers. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, as I said, in this video, we're gonna be taking a peek at the FX Pack Pro made by EverDrive, which was manufactured by Crix. And this was sent out to me for review, and I've actually got another EverDrive video that's gonna be coming out shortly, so stay tuned for that. But as I said in this video, we're gonna be taking a peek at the Super Nintendo EverDrive. Now we're going to go ahead and get this thing out of the box and it's actually really nice and simple. You get a very sleek looking box that just is branded with the EverDrive logo on the front and then nothing else around the rest of the box. As soon as you open it up, the only thing that we're going to get in here is the actual FX Pack Pro and there's nothing else, no instructions or anything else. It's just going to be the device and really that's all you need for something like this. Now you guys may have been familiar with the SD2 SNES Pro game cartridge that was released for many years and that was what EverDrive was sending out if you wanted a Super Nintendo multi-cart. Now this FX Pack Pro is their newest version and it has some substantial improvements including compatibility and a whole bunch of other things and I'm going to get to that in a little bit but I do actually want to disassemble this thing just to show you guys the level of quality that you're going to be getting when you purchase one of these products from EverDrive. Now it's important to note that EverDrive products tend to be the most expensive when you are dealing with multi-carts, but there is something to be said for what you're getting. You get some of the highest quality product period on the market. You're not going to find any multi-cart that uses higher quality parts or has more thought put into it than what you're going to get out of an EverDrive. And when you take a peek at something like this, it is important to note that there is a reason why you want to spend a little bit more, especially when you are dealing with home console multi-carts. There are a plethora of knockoffs available on the market, on AliExpress, and different websites like that. The problem with them is that they aren't rated for the proper voltage. There are a select few manufacturers, EverDrive being one, Retro Circuits being another, that actually put in the proper voltage regulators to prevent any potential damage to your console. That's super important because as we all know, Super Nintendo consoles are not being released. It's becoming more and more difficult and more expensive to get your hands on a very good quality Super Nintendo, especially considering they had a whole whack load of issues with the plastic yellowing and becoming brittle due to UV damage. So you just don't wanna run into that sort of situation where you're kind of scrambled looking for something because you're using something that effectively will cause damage over the long term. And then in addition to that, you are getting a very high quality four layer PCB build and all of those sort of things just speak to the total value that you're gonna be getting with one of these devices. Now, in terms of some of the features that we've got with this thing, it obviously accepts a micro SD card. Now, they've tested up to a 200 gig micro SD card. I don't know why on earth you would need something quite that large specifically for the FX Pack Pro. Just keep in mind that there is no XFAT support, so you must be formatted as FAT32. Additionally, it's got fast ROM loading and it's somewhere clocked in at around nine megabytes per second, which isn't crazy fast by today's data transfer standards, but we're talking about Super Nintendo games. Most of them aren't even nine megabytes in size, so you are totally fine. It's gonna be very quick, instant loading, no problems whatsoever. Additionally, in terms of the internal menu, they've got fast menu navigation, and when I get that up on screen, I'll show you guys all of that sort of thing. And then bundling in with that, they've got a high resolution menu, and that's really nice because it looks proper on the screen. You can have long file names and things like that, and it's all going to display nicely and be very visible. Now, one of the other big features here is that it does have a built-in real-time clock and it does support ROM sizes up to 128 megabits. Now, there's a couple other big things that I did want to talk about here. The first thing is that it has a Super CIC key built into it. And that's essentially something that's going to prevent any sort of region locking done on the device. So you're pretty much able to play whatever game from whatever region. And it's actually going to support an automatic switch between 50 to 60 hertz, depending on what console you're using. And it does all of that automatically. 
The second big thing is that there are a ton more supported enhancement chips. Now, a lot of these chips are going to be things that we are very familiar with. The DSP-1 enhancement chip is something that most of the SD2 SNES game carts or any of the knockoffs should be able to do because those are going to be for specific games like Super Mario Kart or things like that that required them and you can pretty much play that on any multi-cart that you find. The big ones here are going to be that we do have the DSP1234 enhancement chips that are pre-programmed into here. We've got the ST0101 chip. We've got the CX4 chip, which is nice because that's going to be giving us access to Mega Man X2, Mega Man X3, things like that. But the big one here is the GSU chips. Those are going to be your Super FX chips. And that's really exciting because, guys, now we can actually get Dirt Racer up and running, which I know is a huge fan favorite. And sorry guys, no, I'm just joking. Obviously, I am not talking about Dirt Racer. I'm talking about Star Fox and Star Fox 2, or a few other favorites would be something like Doom, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, things like that. On some of the SD2 SNES previous revisions, this enhancement chip was not functioning. You weren't able to play some of those games, but it's important to note that the FX Pack Pro has a 99.8% full library compatibility, which means pretty much any game you can think of is going to run properly regardless of enhancement chip compatibility or any of the real-time clock features, any of those things, the games should run. Now we do know that there are a few games and to be completely honest, most of them are Japanese games, but there are a couple in here, for example, Far East of Eden Zero and Super Power League 4. Those ones are not going to function regardless of what you do. It just does not have the enhancement chips that are needed in order to get those games running. That being said, I will gladly take a 99.8% compatibility rate. That's better than the compatibility you're going to get from a lot of devices trying to emulate Super Nintendo. Now I'm going to mention that you've probably noticed the shell itself is not a North American shell. This is a Super Famicom shell, but I should mention it is actually a multi-region shell. And that means it's going to fit any of the regions. It'll fit both the North American or NTSC versions of the console because we have these two little cutouts that will fit into the console as well as the PAL or Japanese region consoles. So that's actually pretty cool. And you are gonna notice that my shell is a transparent red. That was my choice when I had this sent out to me. I had a couple of different options as you guys would if you were purchasing this. You can kind of customize this literally any way that you want. Now jumping into some on-screen footage, as you guys can see, if you were to just take this out of the box without an SD card and dump it into the console and try to turn it on, you are going to get an error. And that's okay because it is actually pretty simple to get this thing up and running. All you've got to do is go to the Crix website, and I'll leave links to all of this in the description down below. You're going to go to the actual product page and you're going to download the latest firmware. Once you download the firmware, you will extract it, it'll give you a folder, and it's as simple as just literally dumping the folders onto the SD card. Now you may be required to load up a few of the BIOSes that you want for specific enhancement chips. That's up to you guys. All the instructions are going to be on the website. I'll leave that entirely in your hands. But if you've got access to that, you literally just dump it into the same folder that you transferred onto the SD card. And then all that's left for you to do is grab all your games and throw those on as well. Now jumping to some on-screen footage, what you're going to see right away is we have just a very clean and crisp menu. There's not a whole lot going on and there doesn't need to be. If we go into our settings, we do have some options and those are going to be just basic settings, whether they're for visuals or if you want to change the brightness on the LED that's built into the game cartridge, that can all be done here too. But the most important thing is how well does it play games? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys a couple of the games running, a couple regular games that don't require an enhancement chip, and then I'm going to throw in a few of the enhancement chip games, specifically the FX titles, so you guys can see just how well it is functioning and running. Now I do have to say I spend a ton of time on my channel doing emulation, whether it's on the PlayStation Classic or the Raspberry Pi or PC emulation or any of those sort of things, but there is something to be said for playing these games on the original hardware. And when you are using one of the FX Pack Pro cartridges, that's exactly what it feels like. The game is going to be loaded up as though you had the original game cartridge and you were playing it on the original console and it feels exactly that way. 
If you are into playing on original hardware, but perhaps you don't have deep pockets enough to buy some of those really expensive games like Earthbound for example, you may want to invest in this. Although it is expensive, it is a one-time purchase, you can load up all your games onto it, and this can literally just stay in your Super Nintendo, and you've got access to pretty much all of your games. The cool thing too here is that it's going to save all of your game data directly to the SD card so you don't really have to worry about batteries running dry and losing your game data, it's all going to be safe on your SD card. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. If you are interested in something like this, I'll leave a few links in the description down below. But let me know your thoughts. Is an EverDrive something you've picked up in the past? Was it too expensive? Are you considering it? I want to hear from you guys. Please consider giving the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.